Hmm. Hmm. Oh, hello. I'm just eating some chocolates here. Well, it is Christmas after all. Merry Christmas. And if you don't celebrate Christmas, well, merry this time of year. Just thought I'd do a very quick video to say thanks for watching. Whether you are a new viewer, welcome along, or an old hand who's been here for years, thanks for sticking around. It's been a funny sort of year, hasn't it? I remember at the end of 2020 thinking, phew, thank goodness that's over. Here's to 2021. And 2021's been fairly rubbish as well. So let's not make any predictions for 2022, except insofar as how things are going to be on this channel. Now, of course, a year ago, in fact, it was, uh, yes, at the end of December last year, I made a video describing how I had grown weary of cruising on the boat. And I wanted to change what I was doing and change the direction of the channel a little bit so that I was focusing more on making documentaries about the canals rather than it being about me cruising my boat. And then I took January, February, March off and began making those little mini documentaries. I think I promised to make about one a month and in the end I made about one or two a month. So actually beating my target there. And I did wonder whether people would still like to watch those videos and, and a few people left, but many, many more people have come on board and the subscriber numbers, as you can see, now over 200,000. And every time I go past a particular milestone, I always exclaim how remarkable it is and, and how joyous, but uh, mind boggling. And once again, 200,000 plus people watching this channel where I just knock about with a video camera and a laptop and turn out a few videos about the canals. It's, it's lovely. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for watching and continuing to watch and particularly with me having slightly refocused the channel for watching and enjoying those little videos that I'm now making about the canals. I've had someone say recently, oh, you should stop calling your channel Cruising the Cut because you're not cruising the cut. And I'm not, no, but it is still about Cruising the Cut. It may not be me chugging around the canals on my boat, but the, the channel is still the same. It's about canals and everything related to them. So I think it is still fair to call it Cruising the Cut, even if it is about Cruising the Cut in general. And I do still enjoy Cruising the Cut just with other people. So for example, the trip I took across the wash with uh, Alan and Tina and, uh, and, and Joe and Michael and Lorna, that was fantastic. And I'd like to do more trips and more different things of different kinds of cruising. But again, it just won't be on my own boat. That That is that is pretty much set in stone now. I'm not cruising on my own boat, but I will go on to some cruising. I may hire a boat here and there and do bits of the canals that I couldn't otherwise get to. I may go and join other people and I will continue in 2022 making little documentaries about different aspects of the canal system. So if you have been enjoying the videos over the last year, and I very much hope you have, then there is more of that still to come. I've already got some uh, fingers in pies for things to film and other stuff I suspect will just kind of fall in my lap as we go through the year. So plenty, plenty more videos still to be made and I hope you will join me on this journey. Now then, uh, what do I do with those chocolates? Oh, speaking of chocolate, won't you join me for some bonus content in the galley? Hello, at this time of year, it is quite likely you might be having guests round and they might well expect some sort of feeding. What could be nicer to feed them than a lovely chocolate mousse? For this recipe, which is my mother's old recipe, although I don't know where she got it from, you will need a bar of probably dark chocolate. It works best, I think, with this dark chocolate. This is 180 grams. You only need half a bar unless... How many does this make? I think this makes four a small... They're small little chocolate mousses. So obviously you can double up or whatever, depending on how many people you need to feed. So half a chocolate bar, about 90 grams, and two eggs. Now, before we go any further, public health warning. This recipe involves raw egg. It does not get cooked. Now, if you are in the UK, it is pretty much safe to eat raw egg, provided that the eggs are marked with the British lion mark. Quite why a lion should have anything to do with eggs, I have no idea. But if they're marked with the British lion mark, or, let me check this, they are hen eggs produced under the laid-in-Britain egg scheme. 
then even if you are, I'm reading this, this off the NHS website, even if you are an infant, children, pregnant woman or older people, you can have them provided they are um, lion marked or under the la Lady in Britain egg scheme. But that refers to hen eggs. Other eggs and eggs not under those schemes should be cooked fully. If you are in another country, and I'm particularly thinking of America here because I seem to recall American eggs are treated entirely differently to how we treat them in the UK, uh, then I have no idea whether you're safe to eat raw egg or not. And if you're in other countries around the world, again, I've no clue. So the onus very much on you to check whether or not it is safe for you to eat raw egg if you want to follow this recipe. But assuming it is safe for you to do so, then this is what you do. You put your iPad out the way before it gets egg all over it. And you need to put the chocolate in a bowl over simmering water, the idea being to gently melt the chocolate. Now, if I'd been organised, I'd have got this going in advance, but I'm not, so I'll put it on there. I also don't know if this bowl I've got here is Pyrex, as in heat safe. I think it's heat safe. We'll find out. And if it heats up with the water, then presumably not a problem. So I need to bring the water to simmering, and this is to melt the chocolate. It does say on the instructions, don't let the chocolate get too hot. If it's hot enough to burn your finger, so this will involve sticking my finger in the chocolate, then it is too hot. Now then, let's, um, while that is starting to warm up, let's open up the chocolate and divide the bar into two. All right, 180 grams, Bourneville dark. Half of it is, there's that much, isn't it? There we go. Right, there's my half of chocolate, which might as well be oh, hello, put into the bowl in little squares. Right, I can feel quite a lot of heat coming off the gas. Whether that's going to be enough to melt the chocolate yet, I do not know. I'm going to need a stirring implement for the chocolate. Other things you will need will be a spoon, a dessert spoon, a whisk, I think, for whisking up the egg whites. Yes, you do whisk the egg whites. And a little spatula type thing for um, generally scraping stuff around. OK, let's put that chocolate out of the way. Um, we will need to separate the eggs into the yolk and the whites. Now, I had a bowl for this. There we go. I've got one bowl for the whites because they're going to be whisked and one bowl for the yolks. Let's do that while this chocolate warms up. Um, I might just stick my finger in the water. OK, that's beginning to warm very, very gently. It's going to take a while, I think. Let's do the eggs if we can. I'm not very good at this. Um, right. Now we need to separate egg and white. There's the white. There's some more white. There we go. Come on. Off you get. Come on. Let's tip that egg yolk into there. We need that in a bit. Oh, that went quite well, actually. Right, let's do the other one. This is not going so well immediately. No, don't you escape. Don't you escape. Let's just, there we go. Egg white. Oh, that's not a bad yolk, actually. Egg yolk. Good, 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 good. OK, what are we going to do with those later? I won't whisk the egg whites yet. We um, need to do that later. And the yolks go into the chocolate, so I don't need to do anything with those. Right, how's this doing? Is it, oh, it's starting to melt. OK, that's good. Right, what we just want to get is all the chocolate nicely melted, but not too hot, remember. Not too hot. 
This could take a while, I think. I'll just give it a bit of a stir. How hot is that water? Yeah, OK, that water is now warm, so I might turn it down to a simmer. I mean, it's not actually at simmering point, but it's it's warm enough that it's melting the chocolate. And since the recipe explicitly states don't get the chocolate too hot, I don't want it getting too hot. Right. This is a bit where you just have to talk amongst yourselves while the chocolate melts. Right, I think that is all pretty much melted. I don't think there's any solid lumps in there anymore. Right, what are we supposed to do now? We've separated the egg yolk and whites. Whisk the whites until solid. Oh, then take the chocky off the heat. Right, I've mucked this up. I should have been whisking while that was melting. OK, let's put that onto a very low heat just to keep it melted. And let's whisk the whites until practically solid, but not too stiff. Almost to the point of being able to tip it over your head, but no further. And this is where an automated device, if you have one, would come in handy. I wonder if I could get an attachment for my DeWalt drill that could I could use it as a whip. There must be an attachment for home power tools so you could use them in the kitchen. Surely. Because this is going to take a while and is already aching my arm. Please, let's not go down the arm jokes. I can see people starting to write arm jokes in the comments already. Let's not go there. Let's keep this family oriented. All right, well, we're gently whisking up the whites. How's the chocolate doing? Stir it, make sure it's not too hot. Stick your finger in. Now, that's barely warm. That's tepid, so that's fine. Right, how are we doing with this? This is certainly not yet at a consistency where I want to tip it over my head. Hopefully, a bit more of this, and we'll get there. Oh, goodness me. That is not the consistency where I could put it above my head. Uh, not practically solid, but not too stiff. That's, I would say that's almost at the point where you could tip it over your head but no further. So I'm going to say that is just about right. Take the chockey off the heat, must not be too hot or it ends up cooking the eggs, which is not the idea. So take the chockey off the heat. I guess I should take it off, off the water as well. Right, let's have that there. Yeah, that is, poke it again. Going to eat, going to have eaten most of this chocolate yeah, it's warm, but it's not boiling. Right, what are we supposed to do now? Take chockey off the heat, tip in the egg yolks. OK, that's not a bit of shell, is it? No, it isn't. It says stir like fury to mix it in. OK, I hope that's not cooking the eggs. I have a horrid feeling it may be, even though I didn't think it was that warm. Stir like fury and let it cool a tad. That's a very scientific way. Oh, do you know what? The outside of this bowl is very hot, even if the chocolate wasn't. Mm, glass. OK, well, I've stirred that in like fury, like it said. Now let it cool a tad. A tad could be anything, couldn't it? Let's... OK. Let it cool a tad. Hmm. I, wonder, I mean, that's sort of cooling a bit, isn't it? It looks a bit cooler. OK. Um, add a dessert spoonful of the egg white mix and stir in. Right, there's a spoonful. 
and stir it in. We come to folding it in in a minute, but for this one, the first one, it says stir it in. So I will do that. I don't know why we stir one in and fold the rest in, but cooking, as you know, is a mystery to me. And if that's what the instruction says, that's what I'm going to do. Right. Stir it. Right, that's stirred in. Re-whisk the egg whites a bit to ensure the correct consistency. Because they might have gone a bit floppy while I was doing that last bit. Right. And tip them in too. I'm going to need another implement, I think, aren't I? Right, have I got another implement? Uh, there we go, wooden spoon will do. Right, tip them in too. Near enough. Okay. Right. But fold these in so that it gets nice and fluffy. Now, don't, it says continue until all mixed in, but don't overdo it or it will go liquid. Feels like it's going liquid already, but hopefully this is all going to fold in. The chocolate is no longer even visible underneath all of that. I wonder if I should be using the big wooden spoon for that. It might fold better. No, I think we're getting there. Fold in. I should point out, I have done this before many, many times, although not, not for several years, but I have made this before and it normally comes out lovely. Because it's so, I mean, it, this is about the most easy recipe you could think of, isn't it, really? There's not a lot to it. Fold, fold, fold. This is folding nicely. You know, there's a bit of chocolate that clearly hasn't had any egg white there. Let's fold a bit more. Right, it says don't let it get liquid. I think we're dangerously at the point of it being liquid here. Yeah. Oh dear. Right. This may or may not work. OK. Continuing all mixed in. I'd say that's mixed in. Pour into bowls slash little dishes and stick in the fridge until set, which is about an hour. Now, theoretically, this makes four, but I've only got three little plastic dish things. So they might have to be decent sized portions. Let's pour a bit into that one. Pour a bit into that one. Pour a bit into that one. A little bit more. Right, trying to get them the same size is also a skill. I have no oh look, there's chocolate at the bottom blast that didn't get folded in. Ah. I did say I haven't done this for a while. That one is just going to have swirls of unmixed chocolate in it. How are we doing? Let's have a little bit more in that one. And I think actually that one needs a bit more. Right, excuse fingers. Oh, yeah, that's got blobs of chocolate on it. Right, well, these are going to be chocolate mousses with blobs of unmixed chocolate in them. Mmm. Okay. Actually, I don't believe that was for four. Because there's, I mean, there's, there's a mousse. There's not a lot there. And I've only done three of them. I think, frankly, I think I could have done four eggs and all the chocolate. And then I could have done four or five decently sized ones. But let us now put them in the fridge and let them set for an hour. It is now about an hour and 20 or so minutes later. I have had a cheese sandwich and a nice cup of tea for my lunch. What could be finer for dessert 
than a nice chocolate mousse. So let's see how it's done. I have a feeling that I probably should have whipped it a little bit more, the, um, the egg whites, but um, well, it looks all right. It looks like it's set. Let's dig in and see what it's like. Oh, oh yeah, that's looking all right. Let me show that to the camera. And there. Give it a try. Mmm. 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 Oh yeah. Mmm. That's worked. It's like eating neat chocolate, but fluffed up with air inside it. It's a mousse version of an aero bar. And actually, that's not half bad. I did think, because it only made three very small ones, that possibly the egg whites needed a bit more fluffing. You can never have too much fluffing. And I think it could have done with a little bit more, and it might have spread out to four. But it's all right. It's quite thick and gooey, which is how I remember it being. Mmm. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty pleased with that. Anyway, I shall finish eating this. And if you decide to make it, I hope it brings you much pleasure and joy as well. And if you don't, I hope you have a happy Christmas. Cheerio now. <laughs>